uh, let's continue uh, with the with the last image. So yeah, Peter, so... I give the word to you again. All right. So so maybe just go back to the the setup. So this was taken with um, the Samyong 135 uh, f 2.8 uh, with a 294 MC um, and with the Alan Hans filter. Um, so that's the wide field shot of the small Magellanic cloud and um, and 47 tuck. And I think I've got one more image. Um, yeah. So I sold some gear and I finally bought myself a 16-bit camera. Um, so I bought the 2600 MC Pro, and this is first light um, with that camera. Um, it's about just uh, just short of 70 minutes of, of data, um, uncalibrated. So this is just a live stack. 17 or 70 minutes? 70. For 70 minutes, we need five nights for that target. <laughs> <laughs> so this was with the, taken with the two, the, um, the 94 EDPH uh, with that camera. Um, I just did a live stack. Um, you know, because it's a new camera. I haven't, I haven't done any calibration frames with it yet. Uh, yeah. I didn't have time. So I just let it run and, you know, it, um, you know, you, you would think, you know, that, um, you know, you, the, there are absolute, there's no sense that no calibration has been done. You know, normally you get, you know, little blotches and things appearing on, you know, on a, on a color image like this with a one shot color, nothing like that. The sensor is absolutely clean. Um, Which camera do you use for this? This is the 2600 MC. Oh, that, oh okay. This one is, this, yeah. this is a beast. <laughs> <In camera. laughs> it's a very nice camera. And um, yeah, I need to sell more gear because, you know, now that you, you know, once you've kind of been bitten by that, you know, that sensor bug of the 16 bits, um, uh, you know, the, the, the extra, the extra dynamic range that you get with those cameras. You want to go mono, right? You want to get the mono equivalent. And so I need to sell more gear, basically. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's, yeah, so that so was taken just a few nights ago. So that's that's me. And is that APS-C size sensor? It's APS-C, yeah, yeah. Fantastic, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I'm um, going to stick it on the RASA next and see what that gives. Um, I'm a little bit worried because, you know, with once you get slightly bigger sensors, you know, then the crop, the, the crop uh, sensors on, on, you know, on something like the RASA, then, you know, the, the tilt issues often raise their ugly heads. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then just I'm left. Yes. So then let me share my screen now that maybe look a bit weird. No, it's working. And yeah, what have I done so far? It's not that much, to be honest. Um, maybe this one. Uh, this is taken with the you can see my screen. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is taken with the RC 12 inch telescope. And I have also a new camera. <laughs> I have the 2400 MC, um, which is a full frame, but uh, with large pixels, six micron pixels. I needed these large pixels because of the two meter focal lengths. I don't want to yeah. get smaller. I can go with smaller pixels. I want proved it, but uh, I wanted this one. And for now, I'm super happy with it. And I captured here NGC 660, a polar ring galaxy, which is a pretty rare object uh, or rare, uh, uh, yeah, how to say, uh, rare type of galaxy with this, this ring structure here around it. And this was taken 
five minutes sub exposures 40 times so for my standards pretty deep something around four hours um, that was some sort of the first light for this camera. Uh, another... Just a question. Um, yeah. Th these beta galaxies just just below the, 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 the main one? This one no, here? No, or... Yeah, these little faint... Did you, did you identify them? I'm curious to know how, yeah. you know, how deep you went. You know, um, what, not, not the redshift. Yeah, not yet. Uh, the... the the redshift of the galaxies is not that much. And in some images, I'm, I'm especially looking for quasars uh, with, with a milliquas catalog. Um, there I can go really, really far away or, or faint. But the galaxies itself, I never go beyond yeah, uh, a billion light years. I right. don't know what, red, what redshift this is, uh, but not not that far in that di in that dimensions but for, for this image i have to do it i i just uh, had not the time to yeah. do it to, to search for some real faint and faint uh, i also have a question uh does your rc is is your rc able to uh, render a whole field of the full frame sensor that is the full frame that's not no crop oh yes oh, really uh yeah. Mm, sorry, <laughs> just a moment. Uh, let me show you the next one. This is definitely the full frame. Um, it is super flat. I use a 3-inch corrector, the TS 3-inch LC corrector. There's only one. Uh, this is working really well. And uh, I can show you this is a full frame because otherwise this galaxy is not fitting in it. This is obviously M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. That is by far the, the deepest and longest thing I exposed so far with the RC. Um, but also not, not too, too long, it's five hours, I think. It's incredibly sharp. Yes. yes. Um, it is a thing with, with the RC and stars. The, they are always a bit bigger than uh, you maybe wanted or what you can make and uh, achieve, but uh, yeah, still it's, I, I Listen, like I it. Have I, have, I have a question. Yeah, sure. What do you use for a uh, collimation for your uh, um, RC? To, to be honest, um, for that one, let me just recap it, how I did it. Um, I use a, a laser, mm -hmm. just a normal uh, collimation laser. And also uh, a device from from TS, mm -hmm. the, the RC collimator, TS RC Colli, um, but it gives only. A, yeah, it is not perfect with both of them, especially for full frame. With an APS-C, there's no real issue. Um, but if you want to bring it to the very late last possible stage, then you need a. a a uh, holographic laser. Oh, yes, yes. This uh, was projecting these circular rings or rings um, to a wall or something like that. Mm -hmm. This is the way to go. There is um, an effect. It, it is not really collimated, to be honest. The stars it isn't. are... It isn't. The stars looking okay, but yeah. uh, let, me, let me just... Check maybe I, I found it instantly. Especially when you have a reflection in it, when you capture a bright star, and I did this, and I won't show you this photo, <laughs> basically. Uh, so I'm still hoping to get a, a holographic collimation laser from from somebody uh, because it's just very expensive, and I don't want to buy one um, because. With, I'm I'm happy with with these uh, results. Honestly, I don't have to to care too much about collimation with that. Um, well, this is very it's it's almost unnoticeable for uh, most people. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the idea in the convolution is uh, this is yes, this is processed. Uh, I can't 
recap. Uh, yeah, there is a deconvolution, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, um, some morphological transformation to get the stars mm -hmm. a bit smaller and something like that. And also the the red the reds are um, then enhanced a bit more because this is only an L Pro. I always use an L Pro as a my standard filter, and uh, these are a bit brought out more. Um, no, uh, that was not what I want. No. Oh yes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so that's <laughs> so. Um, that is also the full frame. Uh, the target was this one here. This is LBN five seven eight. No, this is LBN five seven eight. This is something different. Um, uh, yeah, from the Lynn Sprite Nebula catalog. But look at this. The stars are in focus. <laughs> they are okay, but this reflection is. <laughs> so weird and i wasn't able to figure out yet uh, this is really a, a recent photo and with, with so few cl clear nights uh, i wasn't able to figure out what to, to do uh, to get rid of this so maybe it's, it's a i get the same thing with the rasa um particularly in o3 um, basically okay. it's a reflection of the corrector plate um Yes, and yeah. There's not much, you know, you can try and use clone stamp a bit <laughs> yeah, to, yes. uh, yeah. to weaken, to weaken the, 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 the halo a bit. Mm. Um, but in the end, what I've done is I, I remove the star. I basically clone stamp the star, move it somewhere else temporarily. And then I clone stamp all of the halo out and then I put the star back. Yeah, yeah. Not ideal, but um, you know. Pre resolution, yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, collimation is not if it's uh, if the if the uh, secondary primary distance once is correct, then this is all all the the tilting of the mirrors. Then it's okay. I also uh, don't have to tilt my camera. So the 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 focus on the back. This is just plate on the back of the telescope I don't have to use the tilt uh, and I'm thankfully for it so it works out of the box okay um, this was this one and let me oh now I have to go back here uh, yeah maybe let me show you this I, I like this one. Uh, I don't know if it has uh, some common name, also a uh, bright nebula in in the, in the Milky Way, NGC six eight two three, and I really like this one. Also the thing with with a oh I can't sorry <laughs> with a halo on on this star, but not that much because it's not that bright. And yeah, I f think this is pretty. Pretty decent. Uh, I don't have a, a narrowband setup uh, currently on the RC, so this is also RGB a narrowband. That would, of course, be more more powerful. But uh, as I saw this one, I had another idea because I, currently I have a hypergraph six and hypergraph at home to do uh, some video prep up and and to to produce some. Uh, Example images and I took this one with the Rasa and my ASI 1600 and this Rasa is just uh, uh, not, not Rasa hypergraph. I'm sorry um, yeah. It's just uh, Yeah, that's great. It, this is more difficult to collimate than my RC I think but uh, The results this is just H alpha. I was able to catch only H alpha results are very nice I think and also a more common region in the sky. This is also hypergraph ASI 1600. I wanted this to be a multiple nights target, so uh, with S2 and O3 to it, but then I suddenly recognized that, I don't know if you see it, uh, here's the collimation definitely off and what is more important, the focus is off. And so this were 
I don't know, three hours or so um, with improper data. So uh, I keep it because, yeah, <laughs> I, I took it, but uh, it's not worth uh, using any further for, uh, for color combination. Okay, so that's from me. And now finally, <laughs> we, <laughs> we are happy to to give the word to, to Paul uh, to tell uh, to tell us a bit about of his astronomy um, journey and and his observations what what he does about his equipment and yeah um, Paul the stage is yours feel free to okay. tell us a bit yes thank you uh, Tosin so um, I'm going to try and uh, share my screen here um, okay. So I'd like to talk about my setup first. Um, yeah, this is the main scope that I uh, use. Just a moment. You are not. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still sharing. That was not my intention. <laughs> no, now yet. Uh, now we are. Yes, you can see it. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, the main setup I'm using, it is um, the 10 inch uh, uh, Skywatcher scope is 250 PDS. Um, as a guide scope, I'm using the 72ED with a uh, ASI ASE 290 uh, monochrome guide camera. I also use it for planetary, but I like to do more deep sky stuff, so it's mainly used as a guide scope. Um, for the camera, I'm quite limited. So, um, yes, as you can see, this is a Canon 450D from 2008, <laughs> and it's still has the IR cut filter, uh, so no really? H alpha for me. Okay. I'm only limited to uh, color photo photography. Um, yes, but that being said, uh, I'm happy with my mount. It's the uh, Skywatcher AZ EQ6 GT. It's uh, very easy to use. It's very precise. And uh, I think it's a good uh, mount for beginners. So that's why I basically uh, bought it. and. Uh, at first, I used the, um, the the Polar Finder inside, but now I'm using um, SharpCap Pro, which has a very uh, useful tool for polar aligning. Um, it's much more precise than using the uh, the, the the Polar Finder. Yeah, um, it's everything is connected to a laptop, which is usually just underneath the the mount, and then I can just sit in here in my room. Uh, controlling it via team, um, what was it called? Team viewer. Team viewer, yeah. yes. Yes, it's very useful because uh, it can get very cold uh, where I'm from in the Netherlands. So, um, yes, lately there has been a lot of clouds. So, the last uh, actual session I did was back in April during galaxy season uh, when I um, didn't actually photograph. Uh, galaxies. I photographed the um, M13 globular cluster. Uh, this is probably my. Uh, can you see it? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Okay, hold on a second. Can you share. Okay, you should see it now. Yep. Okay. This is my uh, best image I have ever taken, and I'm pretty proud of it. It's, uh, as I said, it's limited to uh, color only. I don't use filters. Um, I think the stars are a bit bluish. That uh, maybe because uh, uh, I was using a refractor. It uh, was not an apochromat. So uh, you get this chromatic aberration, uh, which is, uh, is not, it's not good, <laughs> as you might know. Okay, my ski my screen is going crazy right now. Is that the same for you? No, it looks no, okay. Fine. Oh, it was it was really going uh, haywire. So, um, yeah, as you may see in this image, there is a black spot which I wasn't able to remove uh, using flats because I still haven't uh, mastered flats yet. I, th okay. I think it's still a very difficult thing to to do for me. Um, there are some. Uh, tiny galaxies in the background, which are uh, present in my earlier images as well. Uh, I, I like this image. I, this is the wide field version. I made a second one. 
it's this one, but it's I think it's a bit clipped. I uh, I did it too a bit too much uh, stretching and stuff in the background. You mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as a result of stretching too much, I think I did get to see a lot more stars right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it, it got to a point where I stretched it too much in uh, PixInsight. Still learning to use that. Um, yes. So. May I just ask if you did you use any BS frames? Uh, I did. I did. I used 15 BS frames, um, but I did not take them on the same night because I actually forgot. And this it's was really a important. Just yeah, it's, it's very important. I know it's the same temperature, same. No, no, bias. Bias doesn't need doesn't need to have the same temperature. I usually do the bias on the during the daylight mm -hmm. because just a cap on and very short exposures, and they pretty much work out. Um, and I'm asking that because I also had the 450D mm -hmm. when I started astrophotography and bias usually get, got rid of the banding you have on the image. Oh, oh, that's a very, uh, yes, I should. Uh... You you you, sh you can get rid of that in PixInsight uh, using script uh, Canon banding reduction or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, it's really mm -hmm. useful and you just mask out the... Uh, highlights and use but, it and it, it just get rid of those bands the the bands are visible i mean if you look closely you can indeed see them but i did not use the debanding tool on this uh, particular image um yes and the bias frames um i do not always I, it was a multiple day project so it's still a bit unclear to me if i should take them like all on the same day or because it i think it's important that the camera stays in the exact same position isn't it? Uh, it's it's for the flats, yes. Yes, for the flats, but so There's, not for the bias. Okay. No, 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 because it's covered. The only uh, calibration frames that needs to be the same temperature and darks mm -hmm. bias, and just the same, the short exposure possible, and the same ISO, and you have a bias. Okay, I did use them on this image, but uh, let weird. me just let me just say when I uh, I first stacked oh, just the light frames. And it was it wasn't as good as this. It was just noise everywhere, and it got uh, overexposed to a point where I just couldn't uh, stretch out the um, the noise. Basically, it it just ended up being very this um, s scrambled image. It wasn't it wasn't good looking. But uh, looking at my improvement, this is the image I took of M13 last year. It's uh, flipped because you see the tiny galaxy. Mm -hmm. Don't know which one it is. Is on the upper side but this it was from 2020 this was basically i think it was four and a half hours or three and a half hours and this one was maybe about nine hours i, I had a total of 104 gigabytes of images oh. like it's the largest project i've ever done Whoa. and okay yeah i think <laughs> you I mean you can see on the edges there's a bit of uh, star trailing going on like from the coma yeah. You can see it here. You, you can see it here very clearly. Um, I am using a coma corrector, but it's not. Uh, it's not actually meant for the refractor I'm using, because uh, the coma corrector I'm using is the. I think it is the Bader MPCC Mark. Uh, just a moment. You use a coma corrector on the refractor? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to okay. see what would happen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that won't work. You yeah. need the, there's a flattener that Skywatch makes for mo most of the their apples, and they, it works. It works pretty yeah, good. It yeah. was because I I don't I don't have a field flattener, and I w was talking to some people on uh, Discord about the if I should use it or not, and they said, mm. yeah, use it. Go ahead, see what happens. So this is what happened. I had to okay. crop this image a lot. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I also have some images from. Uh, Ooh, my that's the ten and, uh, we, think uh, it's, uh, it's the, how it's called uh, cat's, cat's eye, eye. Yeah. cat's eye nebula <laughs> yes it was from last year uh, I did not use any darks flats bias images it's just a this was just a test basically but this is the Newtonian this is from the Newtonian yeah. yes I was um, I forgot to uh, mention actually I am using a let's see it's not very visible on this picture it's over here. Can you guys? You guys can see this, right? Yeah. And my setup. I bought a moonlight focuser, two-inch Crayford, mm -hmm. uh, and it was basically just a test to um, 
to try that out with this image. So I use out autofocus for the first time and it, I think it turned out very nice, but I need to uh, do my uh, collimation a bit better because still off. I, I do have a collimator, a laser collimator. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I still have some more images. This is uh, M51. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's it was uh, 51 images, 50 images, unguided. I, I don't know how, how it got so nice. It was unguided shots. I mean, uh, and I'm, how, how long were the sub-exposures? Uh, 50 seconds. So 50 okay. times 50 seconds. Okay. It's okay. it's not too bad, but I didn't have a guide camera when I took this image. I mean, it was 2018. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but that was actually my first image I ever took with the 10 inch and the 450D. So M81 and 82, you guys can see what's going on over here. I used uh, drizzle for the first time. And that's what happens. These uh, these pixels everywhere. Ah, uh, yeah, you you can get rid of this with with correct calibration, or you should get rid of this. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah. But uh, I I'm I'm not that experienced in um, processing yet, so yeah. I'm getting there though. It's getting better sure, and better yeah. every time. Yeah. Um, Crocs Eye Galaxy, I think mm -hmm. it this is mm -hmm. M94. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, this was, it says 3.5 hours, but that can't be, I think it's way less. If, if this was 3.5 hours, uh, it would turn out better. Uh, I, I can't uh, remember. It's ages ago. Uh, what, what was the number? M94. Yeah. M94. Yes. This one is very interesting because it has the ring around it. Yeah. I like, I like, that's why I wanted to shoot it, but, um, yeah, it's basically pretty it was, you, you guys can see the uh, light pollution over here. I mean, the gradient and stuff. Oh, okay. it's, it's a very washed out image. I don't, I don't like it that much. It's not, it's not 3.5 hours. That's not possible. Mm. Can't remember. Do you have any, any darker places in Netherlands or is it just all light polluted? Uh, no, there are some darker um, uh, places. I live very close to the border with uh, Belgium and just above me, there's like a, um, a nature reserve, like, uh, Maybe you know in Germany, there's a place called uh, Eiffel. Mm. Um, my dad is going to buy a house there. So uh, that's where I'm going to move my setup to. Oh, definitely, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. And uh, it's called, in my country, that uh, national park is called the Beesbos. And uh, there is no houses, no cities there. So it's perfect. Oh. But I have to go there with my boat. And I don't like to take such expensive equipment on the boat. With, with a boat? Yes, on a boat. You have to get there with a boat because it's a bunch of islands and stuff. And, okay. <laughs> and I, I, I yeah, do, I'm, that's... Trying, I'm going to make a video about that, but it's <laughs> it's very risky. So I need like proper carrying bags and stuff for the 10 inch. Yeah. It's huge. I do have one for the mount, but not for the scopes yet. So mm. we'll talk about hardcore conditions and. <laughs> just imagine that you, you haul all the gear up there on a boat and you, you just see the clouds roll in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very sad. Luckily, I have a tool to uh, my country. My country's weather, um, like weather services have a very, very good tool uh, on the Internet that I can. It's uh, infrared, infrared uh, images to see mm -hmm. the, if the clouds are coming in. And I know exactly when I should or when I not should set up. So okay. I got that on my uh, good side. So um, here is an image of uh, Meje 101, Pinwheel Galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 3.7 hours using the 72 ED. Uh, it's also from last year, and you can see some hot Did pixels, it... some blue, red. 3.7 hours? Pixels. I, I thought there should be more. That's really long integrated. 3.7 hours? Yeah. But okay, oh. it is all M101 is not that that bright. This basically has a low surface brightness, but I, I yes. thought there should be more. Yeah, I, I know this. I mean, this was done. Uh, I only started using calibration frames a couple of months ago. Before, mm. I just didn't. This is um, just me trying out my new gear, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, sure. and um, I'm also shooting on ISO 800 instead of ISO 1600 because. The Canon 450D, if you use it on ISO 1600, the noise you get is just yeah. insane. Yeah. It's I, I know, insane. yes. I also, I, I used it also 
on ISO 1600 and then went back to ISO 800 because it yeah. was uh, unbearable. Yeah. It, it, it is unbearable. And, and I think the images on ISO 800 are just way better. It, I mean, yeah. when, you're, mm. when I'm using uh, the noise reduction tools in PixInsight, um, on ISO 1600, I tend to basically wash out too much of the image. It becomes very blurry, I think, if mm. you're going to get rid of that um, that noise. And yeah. with ISO yeah. 1600, uh, it's just it's much better. It's much man much more manageable. Mm. Right. So yeah, I'm not switching back to that. Have you tried lowering the ISO even even lower and just uh, extending the exposure time? Uh, yes, I, I have thought about that, but um, I could do that with the 72 ED, but not with the uh, 250 PDS, because the the guiding uh, when I'm using the 250 PDS, so the 10 inch uh, Newton, the the my guiding isn't that accurate. I mean, I get like point point eight maybe, and with the 72 ED, I get point six, point five yeah. seven. M maybe for the for the Newton, you should consider the off axis guider. The off-axis guider, yes, yeah. yes, indeed. I have been thinking about that, but um, what I will be doing, I think, I'm going to um, look for a new guide scope because this one is too slow. I think it's um, it's f it's f6, I believe, 72 ed or 5.4, I think. Not sure, but um, yeah, I'm thinking about getting like an Evo guide or something, something smaller. And what about, what about increasing oh. the Gain or the exposure on the guide scope. I'm sorry, like on the guide cam. If you on... increase the gain or exposure on the guide cam, yes. Will what does fix the issue you have like, or why why do you want to get a faster one? Um, no, I just I, I mean I got I have a finer scope the 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 finer scope you get with your 250 PDS when you uh, unbox it. I've I've taken images with that scope using that as a guide scope. Um, and it was e easier to uh, polar align. It was easier to guide. The guiding was more precise. It was it was just faster overall. Using this mm. guide scope is also very heavy. So uh, I've I've noticed that the lighter scope you have, the better guiding results you get. Maybe I'm just not balancing it correctly, or maybe I'm not. Yeah, it's ne nearly impossible to to get rid of this differential flexure that you get between two two scopes that's i also used a 72 ed uh years ago and i never never get this working as a guide scope no uh, as i'm switched to an off-axis guider all problems were gone it worked mm. uh, i might instantly. look into that because yeah. off-axis guiding is just a but, little device in between your um uh, yes yeah. focuser right yeah that's yes, right. right, right, right. And uh, I have on my DSLR, I have this TS9, TS OEG9, it's called. It's a very small, a uh, very thin, nine millimeter uh, thick um, of axis guider that gives you, together with a one millimeter T ring, the 10 millimeter you need to get this 55 uh, to the comma mm -hmm. corrector. So this was always working, but also a light uh, guide scoop. I think that should also work. Yeah. Well, is there a difference between uh, off-axis guiders for Newtons and um, April? I mean, Acromat? No, no. It, it's no. it's all the same. It, it's so like, just you you have to get the back focus right because it, okay. it, it adds some 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 of the length. But uh, yeah. once you get it right, it, it just works. It's universal. Yeah. Okay. Especially yeah. with Newtonians, this, this distance is. Uh, can be a problem point. because uh, you are limited to the to the 55 mostly there are 55 millimeters uh, with the bada for example uh, and I, know, the I, would definitely, I would definitely recommend um, off-axis guiding but if you do want to get a guide scope a faster guide scope then prima lucha lab make a very nice f4 60 millimeter guide scope um, and it's got a helical focuser, which you know, which is which is nice. Yes. Um, and also, if do you have a comma corrector yet? I do. Uh, which you have a bother one, right? I'm sorry, what? The bother. Yes, the, bother MPCC Mark Three or Two. Yeah, um, I have a bother. Um, I don't know what is it called a CPC something. I don't know anymore because I just got it. 
Um, and it basically needs uh, like 94 uh, millimeters of back focus. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? that you... 94? That's yeah, uh, I, can, I can go get it if you want to. Wait, I'll, I'll come back. Okay. okay. Oh my God, this is unbelievably long. Um, 94 millimeter, that's a lot, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, okay, so um, this, uh, Peter, the 60 millimeter guide scope you were talking about, from what brand was it? Uh, Privilegial Lab, the Italian. Does uh, Telescope Service uh, have it on their website? I think, oh, not sure. No, I don't probably think so. not. Probably not. I'm not sure. Also, I haven't heard of it. So yeah, but I, I believe in your case, uh, since you have a Newtonian with uh, that long uh, focal length, mm -hmm. you you just you you just get better with uh, uh, yeah. off-axis guiding because mm -hmm. you would have to have a guide scope also with quite long focal length. Yes. So you, you would get uh, get that precision you need. So. Mm -hmm. The Ofaxis guiding is, uh, it, 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 I think it would be better. I know yeah. uh, the reason why I don't have it is because my focal length is not that that long. It's, uh, I believe, 700 millimeters. And I was considering it for a long time, but I, I found out that I don't need it yet. But overall, uh, there's some... Uh, on the internet, you can find a lot of comparisons. For example, guide scope versus off-axis guider, and mm -hmm. you you can see the difference in sharpness of the images because uh, you you have less error in guiding using the off-axis guider. So, if yeah. it, it's harder to get it right and working, but once you get it, it should be better. There is one thing yeah, that I, I that I want to mention. Um, Especially the longer the folk, uh, the, the problem with the off axis guider is that you have only a very small prism which refracts a bit out uh, the, of the light out. And so it can be difficult to get a guide star, especially if your guide camera is not that sensitive. Uh, maybe that can be an issue. With, for example, with my RC 2000 millimeters, uh, there are some objects where I just can't get a guide star. It's not possible, even with 10 second exposure or so, mm -hmm. which is working, but uh, yeah, <laughs> this is a bit annoying in the, in, the, in the when you start with it and you think, oh my God, what's this crap here? I have to rotate my camera and now my flats <coughs> aren't working anymore or something like that. That can be an issue. But it's, I don't think I'm going to have that problem because my, the guide scope I have is it's, uh, it's monochrome, so it's so very sensitive and it's the it's, I'm not using the 120 from um, okay. ZWO. It's, I, I have the 290. It's mm -hmm. it's very sensitive. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. I'm that's, very happy with it. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, that's. I think thing. I'm. I, I think you guys are right, and I think it would be better off with a off-axis guider. I'm if you if that. you consider spending money to something, I would also consider off-axis guider. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm thinking right now. The most important thing for me is to just. Get rid of that Canon 450D and uh, maybe yes. just like, <laughs> yeah. I was looking at maybe a 533 or something because of the square sensor. Yeah. And and I like shooting. I I mean I'm focusing on objects, not on areas or regions. I don't. Mm. I'm very interested in like M27. Is my favorite, absolute favorite, dumbbell nebula. Like okay. it, love the colors. Yeah. yeah. Um. Stuff like um. Snowball. Um, I've never actually shot it, but yeah. Right. So um, back then, I was talking about the comma corrector that I have for Newtons that has 91 millimeters focal length. Um, it basically looks like this. So this bar right here. In a second. Uh, uh, just a moment. Uh, let me increase. Uh, can I move you to the stage? Just a moment. No, I can't. I think if uh, Paul stops screen sharing for a second, then you, I think you should be able to. I paused it. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, that was not my intention. I can. I, I could screen share it and just make his uh, camera bigger. 
maybe. Uh, sorry, that I... I I could screen share and just make his uh, camera bigger. Maybe. Mm, something. Well, what if you stop uh, screen sharing for a yeah, second? Yeah, I and... think you have to stop it first. Yeah. Oh. I don't know how to. <laughs> it just says new share and resume. Then resume and then stop. Try, try that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. No. I, I, I never use. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, always a bit special. <laughs> so basically, the actual comma character is here, mm -hmm. and it has 91 millimeters focal length. No, the back focus, it's right okay. here. Yeah. And basically when you, you can get a pretty cheap off axis guide with it. Um, and you just screw it on and you have the, um, the amount of back focus right here that you needed to 55 millimeters. So you basically just need an M42 adapter and the camera lens and you just put it on here. And you have the proper back focus for this comma corrector, and you can also have a off axis guide on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same thing is with this, uh, with the smaller off axis guider or the, the thinner. Then it's also working for, well, for well, shorter yeah, you back can, focus. But yeah. you need to get the proper back focus then. Yeah, like you, this this uh, off axis guide right here is especially for designed for this uh, comma corrector. So you basically, when you have these two on. You need just 55 millimeters of back focus added to get the proper back focus. Mm -hmm. And with us, uh, with the ZWO cameras, I found out that I need um, to have an 11 millimeters in a second. I need this adapter that comes with the ZWO camera on it. And then I can only reach focus because without that, I can't. So basically, or the cooled com color cameras or any ast astronomy camera, um, I need this kind of spacing. And then just mm. the filter wheel and the camera, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. What, uh, how much does your setup weigh with uh, that part? Um, pretty much the same as yours, because we have the same telescope. Mm -hmm. um, and the DSLR is probably heavier than the camera itself. So. OK. It's not maybe a bit. Um, <laughs> I forgot how to say the the easy word. Later. It's a bit not the other of light. Heavier, 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 <laughs> heavier yeah. yeah um, maybe it's a bit heavier with this old stuff because but it's no, like more no problem metal. for no problem for the for the AZ EQ six. Definitely. No, 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 it's not a problem. Shouldn't be. But I, I don't have a problem with a 6R, so my guiding is usually at 0.5 with a guide scope on the uh, 6R, so AZ EQ6 shouldn't have a problem at all. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I think if I, if I remove the, uh, the 72 ED, it will be much lighter, so it wouldn't matter anyway. Ah, yeah, okay, probably. yes. That, okay, that's uh, definitely a thing to consider. Yes. It's, it's large. Yeah. It's very yeah, large yeah. for a guide scope. Mm. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Okay. Um, can I continue with uh, some images? Yeah, sure. I, only have, sure. I have a few left, so. Okay, so um, M101, very nice image, I think. It's, it can be better for the stuff I have. So. But uh, that, yeah, this is a, a test image I took mm. of uh, Arcturus. It's very, you can, I tried to test my um, my collimation. Here yeah, sure, we, we all do this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you can see it. and. It's, I don't know if you have noticed, but in every single image I'm taking, you can see this, this stain. Oh, it's mm. always there. Mm. That's that, a that, dust that. spot, most likely. Sorry, what? It's most likely a dust spot. On the center or on the yeah. coma correct? Oh, somewhere in the Im imaging tree. <laughs> yes. mm. I think on the sensor. It's yeah. on the sensor because if it would be on a corrector, it would be just a huge ring and not, oh. not, that, mm. not that sharp. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I may have to clean the sensor, but I, it's, I think I'm just going to buy a new camera. It's <laughs> 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 always, never always a solution, yes. <laughs> never use it again. Just throw it away. Um, 
Okay, so that was it for uh, my deep sky images. I, I last year I took a image of Mars with the um, mm. ten inch and the AS ASI two ninety monochrome. Um, the seeing was very bad, and uh, this was this was during the opposition, and yeah. I was using a, a times four Barlow, the uh, the two inch from uh, Teleview, and. Uh, that's it's, nice. It, nice. Yes, I'm very happy with it. I've, I've yet to. I, I want to make a time lapse on Jupiter, but uh, there's a lot of buildings uh, like obstructing the view for Jupiter. So that's yeah. I, I really want to uh, capture the rotation of uh, planets. Yeah. I did it once. Uh, I should have a video open here somewhere. It's right here. It's a time lapse. I recorded the uh, rotation cool, of uh, yeah. planet. Yeah. And the moons. Mm -hmm. um, this was done, oh, I think, over a period of about two hours, I think, with the 450D ages ago. <laughs> not even. That's not even what I call days. effort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was tedious just aligning everything in Photoshop yeah. and stuff. Oh. <laughs> but I'm happy with this. I'm really happy. Are these processed stacks, planets, or just single stars? Um, no, they were, they were um, videos. I think each about. 20 seconds long and then just stacked in i believe i used deep sky no 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 registax i used yeah. registax back then yeah. about three years ago and then just um each time about i think it was about 20 images and then taking that final image the stacked image and aligning it in photoshop it was uh time consuming but i mean Word. i like do i like doing that so <laughs> Um, I don't think I have any more images to show. Uh, this this Mars photo is this taken with any filter? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't have any filters. Okay, I mean, plain luminance. That's this good. is just plain. This is just plain luminance. Okay. It's just directly on the sensor. Nothing in between. No coma. Nothing. Hmm. I mean, stupid to do to use a coma with planetary. So. <laughs> right. Yes. If it's in the center, <laughs> right. yes. Done. Yeah. <coughs> Um, basically, those were my images that I uh, had to show you. Um, I did, do have this uh, photo I took in two, during the Neowise. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two years ago, I believe. No, it was last year. It was last year. Summer last year. Last year. Oops, yeah. yes, and, uh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I, um, I took my telescope with me, um, the 72ED. Uh, without counterweight, I wasn't going to do astrophotography that night. I just wanted to get a nice shot on uh, yeah. Neowise. Yeah. And I did get a nice shot on Neowise. Um, although I don't think I'm going to be able to find it in a second. It should be in here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never oh, shot a, good. I've never shot a comet before. It's the first time. Yeah. And I'm happy with this, but the clouds were coming in and yeah. Very cool. Yes, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that's basically uh, it on my part. <laughs> really nice to see. And we are looking forward when you have uh, a camera, a, a real camera, <laughs> then you are a real camera. Crashing it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yes. That will uh, help to, yeah, just to get more data out of your time. Yes, when indeed. You, when you, I mean, uh, when you ex expose uh, <laughs> with a proper CMOS camera these targets, then yeah, it's, it's the night difference between, between yeah. old DSL, DSLR and cooled cameras. So you're gonna I mean, love it. I would almost uh, think it is just basically a not not a waste of time, but it's. Um, it, I know it can be better with a better camera. So um, when I'm going out shooting, packing everything, setting everything up, yeah, and sure. then shooting with the 450. I, I'm using, so I'm not using um, what most people use. I'm using a software called Nina. It's uh, no, no, it's uh, and on the uh, how can I say it on the ascending uh, path. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically, um, it had problems using the 450D at the beginning, so I would just spend hours and hours just trying to figure figure out why my camera wasn't connecting, mm. and it would end up being 3 a.m. before I even recorded like maybe one image or something. So I spent a, a lot of nights just trial and error, basically. Mm. That's what it is, actually, yeah. trial and error. 
yeah. just try something out and learn from it. That's right. That's right. Especially uh, with, uh, um, let's say, new software. Um, and I also had issues with it before. I connected my 5D to it and also my ASI294 and it was just not working. And uh, <laughs> But then uh, they are always improving it and then doing corrections. So um, I'm pretty sure that this software will will over, overcome over uh, the well-known standards like yeah whatever maxim or sgp or yeah. something sgp uh, yeah it, it still it still has i still have problems with it because um i like to shoot targets that are directly overhead you know dire directly sure. above me yeah. so i get um so i get as uh, low light pollution as possible as as as, mm -hmm. as less as possible so um there is a th feature called uh, auto meridian flip yeah it, it, we, we it's it. just not working i've spent <laughs> Oh. tens of hours on it it's not working uh, but what it's, what does it do i mean there's this thing before uh before the meridian like pause before meridian mm. put it to like 10 minutes maybe five minutes in that seven minutes and it would um stop taking photos then it would uh swing um it, it would it would do the meridian flip as it should but then the guiding wouldn't restart it would just end up um, uh. drifting out like insanely i mean i would get perfect guiding but once it switched around the meridian um it would just end up being very divergent uh, mm. the trend line yeah you have to you have to enable the re reverse declination in yes. our axis i think I that's a phd or in nina i don't know but i, I don't know i it's know a, that this fixed the issue that i had because it's, I had the it's, same it's issue. A you have to enable it in uh, phd but i tried that too doesn't work doesn't work it's it's interesting. Okay. it is interesting <laughs> so i got some i got some people out that i know and i'm going to talk to them about that so i I'm, I'm i have the developers on discord so okay yeah, yeah. i i heard that this uh, that this should work really good to get in contact with them isn't it uh, like yeah, they're pretty responsive Sorry, the Nina Nina guys are very responsive. Uh, that's what I mean. Yeah, okay, yeah. they are cool. Mm. You can main... also you can also go in the Nina Discord if you want to. Yeah. Do anybody of you know if they can support uh, observatory tracking? Uh, the, this, yeah, uh... they do. They do. Really? Yes. Oh. You can wait. I have Nina open right here. Uh, the last time I downloaded and tr and used it, there was no observatory connection. The, that's why I'm not looking uh, more into it but if they can recently it's in the pre it's in the preview it's uh, part of the advanced sequencer okay good to know <laughs> yeah and there's, oh, some very nice things, there's some nice things you can do you know you can put it you can you know, in my case i i will open the roof and then i'll have a little um period of time i can set a period of time for the equipment to cool down mm -hmm. To acclimatize, and yeah. then you, then I can get the sequence starting, and so there's lots uh, of lots of functionality. Yeah, but I especially mean this um, within within uh, dome observatory. You have the to, tracking, the, the tracking, yeah. which is uh, uh, a coordinate transformation, which is not that trivial. Um, yeah, I think it does. I think okay. it does. That's definitely worth a look. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, by the way, Paul, did you? I um, just saw the new heater on the primary. Did you buy it by itself, or just, or did you get it by the scope? Um, I'm sorry. Say again. The new heater you have on the primary mirror. Um, yes. Did you get it with a scope, or did you buy it like individually? Uh, no, I just I just went around searching my dad's uh, shed and found one, and then ordered the uh, protective cover on uh, AliExpress. <clears throat> I need this. One. I need this. It's a twelve volt. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It can run on nine volt batteries, like the small ones. That's I use for that. I use the nine volt batteries, the square ones. Mm -hmm. Works fine. But I I turn it off once I'm gonna take start taking images because of the um, the um, the air inside the telescope is storing some of the images sometimes because mm -hmm. in 
I, I don't know how it is. Uh, you are from the Czech Republic, right? No, I'm from Slovenia. So is from Czech Republic. Oh, okay, okay, I got, got mixed up there. But in the Netherlands, there uh, is a lot of dew, like a lot of dew in, especially this time of year, mm -hmm. and uh, it it fogs up the mirror very rapidly. Yeah, so, same for me. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah it, it works fine, but I think it's better to use a dew heater. Mm -hmm. But okay. yeah, you know, money. <laughs> Okay, guys. Then it was a, a long session, unfortunately, with a break. Um, but I think we uh, seen some very impressive things, and it was really cool to have you here, Paul, um, for a little chat. And yeah. Uh, yeah. We hope that next time everything worked works better than today. Um, um, looking really forward for the next session. Um, then again, I think it should be uh, happen uh, October, November, end of November, beginning of December, maybe before Christmas. We can do definitely another session. And let's see if the autumn uh, here in the northern hemisphere the autumn brings some some clear nights that we can use i hope it does <laughs> yes when we need. okay then uh, thank you for yes. for now and i hope to see you soon right yeah see you guys yeah see yeah. you guys and clear sky <laughs> yeah you too okay chat you soon Bye. 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 Bye.